Hey folks, I've been playing Chris's new paper computer game, PCG Anniversary Special 2. And, by the way, uh, I'm wearing a hat because my hair is uh, too messy to show on camera. See, look. PCG Anniversary Special is epic. It is bringing in so many Easter eggs and characters and references from the entire PCG franchise and universe, not just from Chris's own games, from not just from my games, but from some of your games as well. We are going to look at some of the Easter eggs we've seen so far. And by the way, just for those who don't know, we are still playing this game. So this is only uh, Easter eggs from the first two episodes, part one and part two, uh, that we've played on this channel in live streams. Those episodes will be linked in the description below. Uh, but there will be more episodes coming out, so I'll have to make more uh, Easter egg videos in the future if you enjoyed this one. So let's get to it. Let's let's get some PCG Easter eggs all up in here. First and foremost, we've got the game's cover. Now, right here on the cover, you can see there's these little lights all around the edges. This is a reference to the original paper computer game anniversary special issue, which is lost to time. I believe it was either like number 74, 76, something like that. I, that was the most distinguishing feature that I remember from playing that game. I can't, once again, I can't show the original. I remember those lights and the sense of epicness and just, whoa so much paper so much adventures to be had inside so yeah this, like this is a wonderful call out to the original game and also on the cover we've got Gron Fresnel so I mean it remains to be seen if Gron Fresnel is gonna appear in the actual game itself but Gron Fresnel of course Gron Fresnel is a living moon and he is awesome is from the recent PCG uh, YouTube roundabouts that we've been playing. Chris created him for, for two, you know, of the live streams. I have a video about uh, Gron Fresnel and, you know, his nature in the description below. It is, uh, that is a really cool addition to the cover, perfect fit. And finally, on the cover we have, you see how he spells anniversary wrong with uh, spelling it with an E instead of an A? See, that's actually a reference to Chris misspelling things throughout the entire history of a franchise. So it, it's a really clever nod to Chris just, you know, basically sucking in general, you know? So so shout out to Chris for, for, for cleverly pointing that out. So on the next screen, we get a call from Zuvac, and of course you might think this isn't all that special because, you know, of course Zuvac has been around, he's like one of the most prominent PCG characters, so yeah, of course Zuvac's gonna be here for the anniversary special, but it is, this is a landmark because this is, I'm pretty sure, the first appearance of Zuvac in one of Chris's modern games. Chris hasn't used Zuvac, even though he created Zuvac. He hasn't used Zuvac in one of his paper computer games in any episode of his modern, you know, Series 3 or Mark 3 uh, incarnation of paper computer games at all. I mean, I've used him, you know, other people have used Zuvac more recently in their games, but this is Zuvac returning to Chris's games, his, his ancestral homeland, as it were, the games that he originated from finally for this for this reappearance and his appearance is interesting see how he's got this elongated head um that zuvac is like that's not the way chris originally drew him in the original pcgs that i think that is actually a reference to how i used to draw him like as you can see him here in balzac lobatron he's got that wide head more recently i've gotten into uh, drawing Zuvac with a with a more circular head to match the way Chris originally drew him But yeah, that, that is a really cool shout out to you know a whole era of PCG history Even though it's Chris doing it. He's doing it sort of like in my style in a way <laughs> Next up, we find out in the next screen, we find out that Zack is flying in the Starship Tabernacle. Now, the Tabernacle is the main starship from my massive paper computer game, Balzac Lobatron. We haven't seen the Tabernacle since Balzac Lobatron, so this is an awesome, awesome, uh, you know, reference. And I must say, rendered here in full color, the Tabernacle just looks gorgeous, as great as it ever has. Uh, so that is a really great uh, call out, and I'm so happy to see it appearing in the PCG Anniversary Special. Now just a bit of continuity, Zack does know previously about the existence of the Tabernacle. At the end of Balzac Lobatron, spoiler alert, 
uh, Zack does encounter Balzac and, you know, the Tabernacle crew. He hails them from Earth. So he so he's, would definitely be aware of that ship. But in this game, we see Zack has just awakened already being aboard the Tabernacle, and none of the regular Tabernacle crew are there. So we don't know what happened to them. It's sort of a mystery. Yeah, that, that's going to be super cool to find out as we keep exploring this this story. So next up, we have Zack f flying over this alien planet. I don't think we've ever seen that planet before, but there is a dinosaur. Now, I mean, okay, dinosaurs, like, to be fair, that might not be a reference. That might just be, you know, it's a dinosaur. But dinosaurs do have a long and storied history in paper computer games. Uh, the last time we've seen a dinosaur in one of Chris's games in particular was in Till Time Do Us Part, where we see a dinosaur attacking a medieval castle alongside an alien flying saucer. So it is, uh, it is Chris's thing to put dinosaurs in places and times you wouldn't expect them. And of course, this dinosaur is chasing President John F. Kennedy, who uh, in real life was the President of the United States in the 60s, but in the PCG universe, he was President of the United States in the 90s. This is actually a shout out to the first PCG anniversary special back from when we were kids, uh, the original one with the lights around it. Uh, the plot of that game was you had to save JFK, who, and there was an assassination attempt against him, uh, which was hilarious. There was no, like, that had nothing to do with the actual JFK assassination. There's no, like, connection there. It just, it just was like, you know, that... Listen, PCGs are weird, you know? Anyway, this is a oh, this is a super cool call-out to the original game that this is a follow-up on, in a sense. The second PCG anniversary special, and once again, you have to save JFK. We haven't seen JFK since that original special, so this is a this is like a recurrence, like probably like 25 years after the original game. So next up, we're heading back to Earth and we see some Croden ships, uh, which which attack our ship and we have to defend ourselves. This is super cool. So, for those who are not in the know, uh, the Crodin are the enemies uh, of the planet Shri, the enemies of Ginkus, the evil dictators controlling the planet Shri. They first appeared in the in uh, my game, The Last of the Zarelta, where you have to escape from them to like after they, you know, they start as a rebellion and they take over your nation, and then that's when they become evil dictators. Uh, this game would take place a thousand years after that. The Croden are now well-established dictators of the planet. We've seen them like this in Balzac Globetron before. Uh, this is the first time we've seen them attacking Earth or doing anything really outside of uh, the planet Shri, but it does make sense. I mean, they are part of an interstellar alliance of evil nations and races and whatnot. So it makes sense they would be menacing Earth as part of the alliance. Now these ships, uh, these sh one of these ships was first seen on the cover of Balzac Globetron uh, as part of Balzac's fleet. Now, I never established what these ships are, but it's completely possible that they could be Crodin ships. Um, Chris, so this is Chris establishing now that these ships are Crodin ships. On the cover of Balzac Globetron, we didn't know what they were. So yeah, um, now we have finally found out what kind of ship that is. And it makes sense that Balzac would have a Crodin ship in his fleet because you know, Balzac Globetron, in that game you make a habit of, you know, taking over enemy ships after you defeat them and adding them to your fleet. Like, that's part of the game. Next up, Zack crash lands on Earth and we meet up with James. He James is not seen here, he is um, underneath the uh, sewer grate, but you, yeah, this is James who was last seen in Chris's game The Nazi Machine. Now, James was a British secret agent living in the 1940s, so he's not uh, current. So, like, what's he doing in the present day, right? How'd he get here? So, like, he seems to have time traveled. But either way, this is this is an epic call out to Chris's game, The Nazi Machine, from way back in the day. Now we are sort of getting into the second episode of our playthrough. So next up, we've got the sewers themselves. The, like, okay, folks, I know sewers are a thing in real life, but this is different and Chris you know made it very clear this is the you know it's not just the sewers this is the sewers right so the very second paper computer game ever made was called the sewers that was how Zach got like fell down into the sewers and he had to explore a whole series of traps and enemies and you know all sorts of things 
in the sewers. So the, the sewers are actually a classic paper computer game location, and Chris is putting the sewers back into this game as a reference to the second ever paper computer game he ever made or anyone ever made. And now we finally get to explore the sewers, you know, in full color, in, you know, glorious detail that we've never seen before. It is great to see the sewers again and to dive back into this classic location. So down in the sewers, one of the first characters we meet is Fungazoid. Fungazoid is a character from Kurt's game Malfoy the Mailbox Bot. Like one of his most classic games, basically the start of his series, even though he hadn't made one or two games before that. Fungazoid originally comes from the planet Zoniad. Uh, he lives in the fungus zone on the planet Zoniat, and he loves fungus. Now, in this game, obviously, he, we find him on the sewers on Earth, so we don't know how he got there. But one thing is very consistent, he still loves fungus. And we find him dancing to a disco ball with, with glowing mushrooms inside of it providing the light. Because, of course he is. Um, and we have to trade him for one of his fungus, but he's very hesitant to give up any of his dear uh, fungus. So yeah, that, that, is a, that is an epic call out. I was not expecting to see Fungazoid in here. Another one I was not expecting to see is down in the sewers, we meet an owl named Oliver. Now Oliver, <laughs> this is quite a callback, um, is is the character from the Sonic Activists paper computer game Owl Treks Legends. Unfortunately, the Sonic Activist has never released that game and now he has lost it, so it's probably just lost to time except for what, you know, he's released in videos and I've reported on PCG News, but either way, uh, Owl Treks Legends is a game about Owliver, an owl who lives in an alternate universe, the Owlverse, which is populated entirely by owls, and he has to go, uh, it's sort of like a mystery to find out, like, you know, what happened to his father, and all sorts of stuff like that. So, now, obviously this game takes place in the regular PCG universe, so we don't know how Owliver got there. He may have traveled to the PCG universe from the Owliverse, or this could just be the PCG universe equivalent of Owliver. It might not be the same Owliver, it might be like the version of him from our universe. You know, like how, ev how different universes have, you know, equivalent versions of all different people, who, but they have like different histories. Deeper in the sewers, we, we meet a mole man living there in a house uh, in the sewers. Now, th this mole man, this is a reference to my PCG, Into the Heart of the World, which takes place on the alien planet Velies. And on that planet, you play as Yippet, um, and you have to travel down to the center of the world where you meet mole men. Apparently, in the center of the planet Velies, that's where the mole men civilization lives. Now. Uh, in that game, you end up destroying the entire moment <laughs> civilization, so that's pretty bad, but uh, yeah, like since that time, we've seen mole men popping up all in all sorts of locations in different PCGs, you know, on different planets, so it seems like after their home was destroyed, they became refugees and they spread out all across the galaxy. We've seen uh, one of them set up shop on um, on the planet Getzor in, in my PCG Balzac Lobotron. We've seen a colony of mole men in, um, on Earth in Yak Games' PCG Worlds Collide Part 1. So, yeah, super cool uh, reference to the Mole Men. It, it, I'm glad to see that they are finding even more places to live. Now, in the Mole Men's house, one of these two paintings on the wall is a painting of Yippet. Now, Yippet, as I just said, is the guy from Into the Heart of the World who destroyed Mole Men civilization. Now, that is quite a reference, but wait a second. Why would you have a portrait of the guy who destroyed your entire people? But this guy, but this mole man guy, he says it's because he wants to keep a reminder of of the tragedy that happens that happened. You know, he wants to keep a reminder of this horrible criminal so that, you know, what happened is never forgotten, you know? So that so that does make sense. Um, it is so that is a really nice call out to that game um, and to Yip It. Um, of course, we saw Yip It once again in Balzac Lobotron, but uh, yeah, and so there we make reference to that in this game as well. And finally, we've got Pinchzoid Crabicus. Now, Pinchzoid Crabicus is the giant crab that first appeared in Chris's paper computer game Relics of the Sea. 
He is a giant mutated undersea crab and you have to fight him. He was the main boss of that game. He wasn't called Pinchzoid Crabicus then. I gave him the name Pinchzoid Crabicus when I brought him back from my paper computer game, uh, Welcome to Death Ward Hospital, where we find out that Pinchzoid Crabicus, you know, has become sentient and he has all these plans and he calls himself Pinchzoid Crabicus. Now, Chris has uh, brought him back once again, apparently has been mutated by all this sewer sludge into something else. And Chris has updated his name accordingly, calling him... That is an epic reference, and I must say, he is looking the best he has ever looked in any PCG. This is a really cool uh, callback. I really like when, you know, a character develops over, like, multiple appearances by different people, you know? Like, I like how, you know, Chris created the crab first, then, like, you know, I gave him a name, then Chris comes back to it and, like, takes it to the next level in this way. It's super cool. So yeah, that is all the Easter eggs and references I've got for right now, but the, we are going to keep playing this game and it is super epic and they're, they're like, this is the anniversary of all paper computer games. This is where every, everywhere PCGs have been, so you can expect a lot more appearances, a lot more cameos, a lot more Easter eggs, and hopefully I'm going to continue making this series of Easter egg videos about this series. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching and PCG you later.